An inclined plane, also known as a ramp, is a flat supporting surface tilted at an angle, with one end higher than the other, used as an aid for raising or lowering a load. The inclined plane is one of the six classical simple machines defined by Renaissance scientists. Inclined planes are widely used to move heavy loads over vertical obstacles. Examples vary from a ramp used to load goods into a truck, to a person walking up a pedestrian ramp, to an automobile or railroad train climbing a grade. Moving an object up an inclined plane requires less force than lifting it straight up, at a cost of an increase in the distance moved. The mechanical advantage of an inclined plane, the factor by which the force is reduced, is equal to the ratio of the length of the sloped surface to the height it spans. Due to conservation of energy, the same amount of mechanical energy work is required to lift a given object by a given vertical distance, disregarding losses from friction, but the inclined plane allows the same work to be done with a smaller force exerted over a greater distance. The angle of friction, also sometimes called the angle of repose, is the maximum angle at which a load can rest motionless on an inclined plane due to friction, without sliding down. This angle is equal to the arctangent of the coefficient of static friction μs between the surfaces. Two other simple machines are often considered to be derived from the inclined plane. The wedge can be considered a moving inclined plane or two inclined planes connected at the base. The screw consists of a narrow inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. The term may also refer to a specific implementation, a straight ramp cut into a steep hillside for transporting goods up and down the hill. It may include cars on rails or pulled up by a cable system, a funicular or cable railway, such as the Johnstown inclined plane. Topic: Uses Inclined planes are widely used in the form of loading ramps to load and unload goods on trucks, ships and planes. Wheelchair ramps are used to allow people in wheelchairs to get over vertical obstacles without exceeding their strength. Escalators and slanted conveyor belts are also forms of inclined plane. In a funicular or cable railway a railroad car is pulled up a steep inclined plane using cables. Inclined planes also allow heavy fragile objects, including humans, to be safely lowered down a vertical distance by using the normal force of the plane to reduce the gravitational force. Aircraft evacuation slides allow people to rapidly and safely reach the ground from the height of a passenger airliner. Other inclined planes are built into permanent structures. Roads for vehicles and railroads have inclined planes in the form of gradual slopes, ramps, and causeways to allow vehicles to surmount vertical obstacles such as hills without losing traction on the road surface. Similarly, pedestrian paths and sidewalks have gentle ramps to limit the slope, to ensure that pedestrians can keep traction. Inclined planes are also used as entertainment for people to slide down in a controlled way, in playground slides, water slides, ski slopes and skateboard parks. History Inclined planes have been used by people since prehistoric times to move heavy objects. The sloping roads and causeways built by ancient civilizations such as the Romans are examples of early inclined planes that have survived, and show that they understood the value of this device for moving things uphill. The heavy stones used in ancient stone structures such as Stonehenge are believed to have been moved and set in place using inclined planes made of earth, although it is hard to find evidence of such temporary building ramps. The Egyptian pyramids were constructed using inclined planes. Siege ramps enabled ancient armies to surmount fortress walls. The ancient Greeks constructed a paved ramp 6 kilometers, 3.7 miles long, the Diolkos, to drag ships overland across the isthmus of Corinth. However, the inclined plane was the last of the six classic simple machines to be recognized as a machine. This is probably because it is a passive, motionless device the load is the moving part, and also because it is found in nature in the form of slopes and hills. 
Although they understood its use in lifting heavy objects, the ancient Greek philosophers who defined the other five simple machines did not include the inclined plane as a machine. This view persisted among a few later scientists. As late as 1826, Carl von Langsdorff wrote that an inclined plane is no more a machine than is the slope of a mountain. The problem of calculating the force required to push a weight up an inclined plane its mechanical advantage was attempted by Greek philosophers Heron of Alexandria c. 1060 CE and Papus of Alexandria c. 290-350 CE, but they got it wrong. It wasn't until the Renaissance that the inclined plane was solved mathematically and classed with the other simple machines. The first correct analysis of the inclined plane appeared in the work of enigmatic 13th century author Jordanus de Namur, however, his solution was apparently not communicated to other philosophers of the time. Girolamo Cardano 1570 proposed the incorrect solution that the input force is proportional to the angle of the plane. Then at the end of the 16th century, three correct solutions were published within 10 years by Michael Varro 1584, Simon Stephen 1586, and Galileo Galilei 1592. Although it was not the first, the derivation of Flemish engineer Simon Stephen is the most well known, because of its originality and use of a string of beads In 1600, Italian scientist Galileo Galilei included the inclined plane in his analysis of simple machines in Le Mécaniche. On mechanics, showing its underlying similarity to the other machines as a force amplifier, the first elementary rules of sliding friction on an inclined plane were discovered by Leonardo da Vinci (1452–1519), but remained unpublished in his notebooks. They were rediscovered by Guillaume Amontins (1699) and were further developed by Charles Augustin de Coulomb (1785). Leonard Euler 1750 showed that the tangent of the angle of repose on an inclined plane is equal to the coefficient of friction. Topic: Terminology. Topic: Slope. The mechanical advantage of an inclined plane depends on its slope, meaning its gradient or steepness. The smaller the slope, the larger the mechanical advantage, and the smaller the force needed to raise a given weight. A plane's slope s is equal to the difference in height between its two ends, or rise, divided by its horizontal length, or run. It can also be expressed by the angle the plane makes with the horizontal, theta. Theta equals tan minus one rise run display style theta equals tan carrot minus one big frac text rise text run big topic mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage MA of a simple machine is defined as the ratio of the output force exerted on the load to the input force applied. For the inclined plane the output load force is just the gravitational force of the load object on the plane, its weight FW. The input force is the force phi exerted on the object, parallel to the plane, to move it up the plane. The mechanical advantage is M A equals F W F I Display style Mathrum MA equals frac F underscore W F underscore I The MA of an ideal inclined plane without friction is sometimes called ideal mechanical advantage IMA, while the MA when friction is included is called the actual mechanical advantage armor. Topic. Frictionless inclined plane 
If there is no friction between the object being moved and the plane, the device is called an ideal inclined plane. This condition might be approached if the object is rolling, like a barrel, or supported on wheels or casters. Due to conservation of energy, for a frictionless inclined plane the work done on the load lifting it, woot, is equal to the work done by the input force, win W O U T equals W I N Display style W underscore room out equals W underscore room in work is defined as the force multiplied by the displacement an object moves. The work done on the load is just equal to its weight multiplied by the vertical displacement it rises, which is the rise of the inclined plane W O U T equals F W rise display style W underscore room out equals F underscore W C D O T text rise the input work is equal to the force Phi on the object times the diagonal length of the inclined plane W I n equals F I Length display style w underscore room in equals f underscore i c d o t text length. Substituting these values into the conservation of energy equation above and rearranging, m a equals f w f i equals length rise. Display style text M A equals frac F underscore W F underscore I equals frac text length text rise to express the mechanical advantage by the angle theta of the plane, it can be seen from the diagram above that sin theta equals rise length display style sin theta equals frac text rise text length so ma equals f w f i equals 1 sin theta Display style text M A equals frac F underscore W F underscore I equals frac one sin theta. So the mechanical advantage of a frictionless inclined plane is equal to the reciprocal of the sine of the slope angle. The input force phi from this equation is the force needed to hold the load motionless on the inclined plane, or push it up at a constant velocity. If the input force is greater than this, the load will accelerate up the plane, if the force is less, it will accelerate down the plane. <laughs> Inclined plane with friction Where there is friction between the plane and the load, as for example with a heavy box being slid up a ramp, some of the work applied by the input force is dissipated as heat by friction, WFRIC, so less work is done on the load. Due to conservation of energy, the sum of the output work and the frictional energy losses is equal to the input work W in equals W Frick plus W out display style W underscore text in equals W underscore text Frick plus W underscore text out. Therefore, more input force is required, and the mechanical advantage is lower than if friction were not present. With friction, the load will only move if the net force parallel to the surface is greater than the frictional force FF opposing it. The maximum friction force is given by F F equals mu F N 
Display style f underscore f equals mu f underscore n where Fn is the normal force between the load and the plane, directed normal to the surface, and mu is the coefficient of static friction between the two surfaces, which varies with the material. When no input force is applied, if the inclination angle theta of the plane is less than some maximum value phi the component of gravitational force parallel to the plane will be too small to overcome friction, and the load will remain motionless. This angle is called the angle of repose and depends on the composition of the surfaces, but is independent of the load weight. It is shown below that the tangent of the angle of repose phi is equal to mu phi equals tan minus 1 mu display style phi equals tan caret minus 1 mu with friction, there is always some range of input force phi for which the load is stationary, neither sliding up or down the plane, whereas with a frictionless inclined plane there is only one particular value of input force for which the load is stationary. <laughs> Analysis A load resting on an inclined plane, when considered as a free body has three forces acting on it. The applied force, phi exerted on the load to move it, which acts parallel to the inclined plane. The weight of the load, Fw, which acts vertically downwards. The force of the plane on the load. This can be resolved into two components. The normal force Fn of the inclined plane on the load, supporting it. This is directed perpendicular normal to the surface. The frictional force, FF of the plane on the load acts parallel to the surface, and is always in a direction opposite to the motion of the object. It is equal to the normal force multiplied by the coefficient of static friction mu between the two surfaces. Using Newton's second law of motion the load will be stationary or in steady motion if the sum of the forces on it is zero. Since the direction of the frictional force is opposite for the case of uphill and downhill motion, these two cases must be considered separately. Uphill motion, the total force on the load is toward the uphill side, so the frictional force is directed down the plane, opposing the input force. The mechanical advantage is M A equals F W F I equals cos phi sin theta plus phi display style mathrm m a equals frac f underscore w f underscore i equals frac cos phi sin theta plus phi where phi equals tan minus 1 mu display style phi equals tan caret minus 1 mu this is the condition for impending motion up the inclined plane if the applied force phi is greater than given by this equation the load will move up the plane downhill motion the total force on the load is toward the downhill side so the frictional force is directed up the plane the mechanical advantage is M A equals F W F I equals cos phi sin theta minus phi display style mathrm M A equals frac F underscore W F underscore I equals frac cos phi sin theta phi. This is the condition for impending motion down the plane. If the applied force phi is less than given in this equation, the load will slide down the plane. There are three cases, theta phi display style theta, the mechanical advantage is negative. In the absence of applied force the load will remain motionless, and requires some negative downhill applied force to slide down, theta equals phi display style theta equals phi, the angle of repose. The mechanical advantage is infinite. With no applied force, load will not slide, but the slightest negative downhill force will cause it to slide. Theta greater than phi, display style theta greater than phi. The mechanical advantage is positive. 
In the absence of applied force the load will slide down the plane, and requires some positive uphill force to hold it motionless. Topic. Mechanical advantage using power The mechanical advantage of an inclined plane is the ratio of the weight of the load on the ramp to the force required to pull it up the ramp. If energy is not dissipated or stored in the movement of the load, then this mechanical advantage can be computed from the dimensions of the ramp. In order to show this, let the position r of a rail car on along the ramp with an angle theta above the horizontal be given by r equals r cos theta sin theta. Display style math bf r equals r cos theta sin theta, where r is the distance along the ramp. The velocity of the car up the ramp is now v equals v cos theta sin theta. Display style math bf v equals v cos theta sin theta. Because there are no losses, the power used by force F to move the load up the ramp equals the power out, which is the vertical lift of the weight W of the load. The input power pulling the car up the ramp is given by P I N equals F V displaystyle P underscore mathrum in equals F V and the power out is p o u t equals w v equals 0 w v cos theta sin theta equals w V sin theta display style p underscore math from out equals math bf w c d o t math bf v equals zero w c d o t v cos theta sin theta equals w v sin theta. Equate the power into the power out to obtain the mechanical advantages m a equals w f equals 1 sin theta display style mathrm ma equals frac w f equals frac 1 sin theta the mechanical advantage of an incline can also be calculated from the ratio of length of the ramp l to its height h because the sine of the angle of the ramp is given by sin theta equals h l display style sin theta equals frac h l therefore m a equals w f equals l h Display style mathrm m a equals frac w f equals frac l h. Example: If the height of a ramp is h. Topic: One meter and its length is l. Five meters. Then the mechanical advantage is m a equals W F equals five. Display style math from M A equals frac W F equals five, which means that a twenty pounds force will lift a one hundred pounds load. The Liverpool Minard inclined plane has the dimensions 1,804 meters by 37.50 meters, which provides a mechanical advantage of m a equals w 
F equals eighteen oh four thirty seven point five oh equals forty eight point one Display style math from M A equals frac W F equals one thousand eight hundred and four thirty sevenths point five O equals forty eight point one so a 100 pounds tension force on the cable will lift a 4810 pounds load the grade of this incline is 2% which means the angle theta is small enough that sin theta equals tan theta equals <laughs> equals see also